Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. I am still on my way home from the Mississippi coast. I am in Georgia, not far from Atlanta, and I'll be home tonight. There is a lot to talk about, so let's just get right to it. Looking at the wide picture here, tropics very active. In the Pacific, we have Norman, which will not be a problem for Hawaii. We do have to watch Olivia, as that may be a problem for Hawaii, either indirectly or directly. And now we have another area, Invest Area 92E, that we need to watch and see how that develops. We're getting to the time of year where these systems can start to feel upper-level troughiness over the west here, and they can try to curve up towards the Baja and Mexico, uh, the mainland area of Mexico. Then, of course, we have Florence, which is the big headline, I guess. Uh, most people most concerned about that. And then 92L, and there's even another feature uh, that the Hurricane Center has marked coming off of Africa. So September will remain very, very busy. Looking at the, let's just look at the Eastern Pacific real quick. This is a lot easier to dissect. Olivia is the biggest concern, and as you can see, forecast a weekend to a tropical storm as it bends more towards the west and maybe just slightly south of west. There's the big island of Hawaii. So yes, we do need to monitor this, but I don't feel as if it is a significant threat to Hawaii. So that's good. Uh, going back to the main map here, first just, just real quick, want to make sure we cover all the bases. The five-day outlook still indicating strong enough ridging out here that if anything develops, it should stay well away from the Baja or mainland Mexico. Your good luck this year, considering all the hurricanes that have formed. I mean, the next one's going to be the letter P on the list. Mexico, the Baja Peninsula, the desert southwest, with the exception of Bud, way early in the season. Uh, this has not been bad at all. All right, so in the Atlantic Basin, there's the remnants of Gordon still bringing some heavy rain from time to time over portions of the deep south there. Mississippi, Arkansas, this will continue to spread up the Mississippi Valley, and eventually this energy will end up in this region, possibly bringing some heavy rain for that area in the coming days. Uh, Florence, the 5 o'clock advisory, since there are no watches and warnings, we only have this updated every six hours. Fairly straightforward, it's weakening now, lowering its presence in the atmosphere. It doesn't take up as much room, so the lower level steering flow will take over more and more. And so instead of it just continuing on like this, it's going to turn back to the west and then eventually start turning back more towards the northwest as it strengthens again. And that's a key element here. The longer that it stays shallower and weaker, then the more west it will go before turning back more poleward or gaining more latitude. So we'll have to monitor that. This is going to be a very, very complicated situation over the next several days with lots of moving parts. 92L, uh, this, let's just look at it on the five day, looking like, you know, developing and heading out into the uh, open tropical Atlantic here. And you folks in the northern leewards in Puerto Rico, Please keep an eye on it. Just, you know, it's that time of year. We saw what happened last year. No indication of a repeat that I can, you know, nail down. Yes, some of the modeling does bring eventually what would be Helene across the leewards. And, you know, there's no reason to ignore the fact that we see this in the long range. Pretending that it doesn't exist, even though it's long range and has huge error prone uh, problems, doesn't mean we should ignore it. You know, if modeling in the long range says it might come your way, well, you know, that's a warning sign I might need to pay attention. So I just wanted to bring that up. You folks here in the northern leewards through Puerto Rico, you never know. This might track your way. It may go further south or more north. We'll just have to see. All right, so looking at the satellite animation here from tropical tidbits of the wide Atlantic, there's Florence, and you can see there are some stronger upper-level winds impacting it. Very well established outflow in the northeast side, but uh, the circulation, the core, really becoming disrupted, and this is going to be a major, major part of the story. Because as this becomes sheared, instead of again going this way, 
it'll start to just kind of flatten out and move more westerly. So the more west it moves, the more longitude it gains before it starts to turn back again with all of this incredible ridging that we have over the western Atlantic there, especially the northwest Atlantic, that's a big key. Uh, what is all of this hullabaloo here? Upper level energy in the atmosphere over very, very warm water, you know, scattered convection in some cases, fairly moderate convection. You can see the upper level low carved out right there, uh, but not developing into anything that I have seen in the model guidance. You never know when these cold core systems sit over very warm water for a long time, things can happen. That's how Joaquin formed back in 2015. Here's 92L. This is eventually going to be 93L. And then hopefully that will do it for the September outbreak of cyclone activity. And we do have to watch the Western Caribbean and the Gulf eventually, but that's way down the road beyond probably even the 10-day time frame. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of things here. The analysis, just to kind of show you, stronger upper-level winds coming through uh, the core of Florence right in here. And so, yes, it's getting impacted by strong southwesterly flow, and that will continue to remove the deeper thunderstorms from the center, weakening it. And I'm going to say it again, the longer it stays into that weakened state, the more longitude westward it'll gain before it starts gaining more latitude or a more northward component. Uh, real quick, just to show you this, a couple of key things. Gordon, just high moisture content, uh, lots of rain, and this will probably spread up towards this area over the next few days. This, I mentioned this yesterday, it's September 6th. I know it gets hot even in September, but here we are, early September, almost a weekend, and a weekend, <laughs> I screwed that up, almost a week in, the weekend will be here soon, and we have heat advisories from southeast Pennsylvania up through, you know, Massachusetts and uh, New Hampshire. Really? Heat advisories, folks, why is that important? I talked about this yesterday, because there's strong ridging up here, and that strong ridging is a trap for hurricanes. But see, all of this moves. It's not anchored in place. Everything's changing every second. And what's there now might not be there a few days from now. And uh, But it's there now, and it's something to consider. When you see heat advisories over here in early September, that means you have anomalous ridging over the area, strong high pressure in the deep layers of the atmosphere. And when you have a hurricane approaching from the southeast, uh, you need a trough out here to curve it out to sea not strong ridging. So that's a little bit of a warning sign, even though we're still talking about a week out before potential impacts from Florence. Real quick, a look at Olivia and 92E, uh, maybe another system that will try to develop later, and the parade just continues in the eastern Pacific. All right, so let's take a look at a few of the model uh, ensembles here. This is very important, a little bit difficult to explain, Lots of different computer models. I'm not going to go through the entire global model suite, you know, from the JMA to, I mean, there's a bunch of them. I'm going to show you the GFS, the UK Met, which is run out of uh, the England, UK Met office in England, and the European, the ECMWF. You have a deterministic run, which is one run, the operational version, and then you have ensemble members with different variables to give you different outputs. And then you try to look for a mean, an ensemble mean or an average, or you can just look at all the plots and you just get an idea with different variables. What are some other possible scenarios? It plays what if, the ensemble guidance, okay? And so as we can see, this is the INSEP, National Centers for Environmental Prediction, the GFS, ensemble track guidance from 6Z or UTC, same thing today. And clearly, only two of those members out of roughly 20 make it all the way back for a direct landfall. There's one or two that get close to Cape Cod. All the rest are an easy miss for the United States, clearly. So you look at this and you say, oh, that's good news. And it may very well be. It's just still too soon to know. And it's also very contradictory 
to this, the UK Met, which is a very reliable overall global model. It's had its biases from time to time. Last year it brought Jose way more south and west than what happened. But look, there are 35 members in this one. Okay, the GFS is uh, 20. And this gives you a nice outline of the envelope. And none of them turn away from the United States except maybe one. So that's concerning. And you may ask yourself, well, why does it show that? Well, I don't know the exact physics of the UK Met, but it's obviously sensing uh, a lot more ridging. And you notice here this uh, bend back to the west-southwest a little bit. If that happens, I would say this will probably hit the United States. We saw that with Irma. We've seen that with other systems in the past. Ike in 2008. Um, those bends happened farther to the east, but we're going to look for that. Let's see if that bend, and even in the guidance envelope, there's that shape, the southwest bend. So this is concerning because it does not agree with this. Vast differences there. And they're both, uh, this is the 0Z zero -Z run uh, from last night. This is six hours later for what it's worth. And then I'm going to show you here the European Ensemble, the ECMWF. And uh, many regard the Euro as the uh, dominant overall best performing global model and the blue is the operational the deterministic run that I'm going to outline in red the best I can with a landfall and then it curves back out and then you have all the different members 51 members total and then this is nicely plotted with the ensemble mean or the average you know this is mathematically done which is nice and that gives you an ensemble mean which clearly misses the east coast that being said, we have 51 members, and I don't know, like, as an example, this ensemble member right here that goes across South Florida, why does it show that? What are the variables that it is, quote, seeing? Oh, my alarm to make sure I was up. Probably scared the heck out of everybody watching. Um, I didn't want to sleep late. Okay. Uh, and it threw me off here. I don't know what the variables are that makes it show that track. But it's highly unlikely that'll happen, okay? So you look for the clusters, and there's a pretty solid cluster, clearly, that comes up this way towards North Carolina. And then there's a more weighted cluster, meaning more of them overall, more densely uh, populated, that goes up this way. And so that's what you look for, are these clusters. And we can see that outlined even better over here on the UK Met. All right, so this is still up in the air. We're talking about seven days, maybe eight. I really hope not. I'd rather, if this is going to happen, let's don't drag it out. Get it over with, okay? It's one of those, like, pulling teeth or whatever. You, 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 it's inevitable if it's going to happen. Don't make it wait and wait and wait. It's going to drive people nuts. So hopefully we're within the seven-day time frame. A, the models have become more reliable once we squeeze that down to six days and then five days uh, and then also um, eventually we will have the upper air sampling from the NOAA jet it will fly out here eventually and we'll have recon and so forth and so on and we will really start to understand the pattern one more thing to show you the sea surface temperature anomalies I mean I've hammered this all season you remember how cold it was relative to average out here well that's all gone but this up here is absolutely stunning. And I mean, it is. It is stunning. We're talking almost off the scale warmth compared to average. You know, 84 degrees at Jeanette's Pier up in uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, I saw Joe Bastardi talking about 84 degrees south of Atlantic City, sea surface temperature uh, at the skin, you know, the top of the ocean. The ocean heat content also uh, quite uh, stout through this region. And this very warm water has the potential to make the ridging, the upward motion in the atmosphere, uh, stronger. And maybe the models don't sense that. You know, there's speculation. You can speculate all day long. Bottom line, very warm compared to average. The stage is set. 
we just have to see what Florence does. I mean, I don't have the answer. I don't. I don't even have a gut feeling. Uh, it's just one of those situations, and I think we're going to need about forty-eight hours, and then I think we will begin to say, "Oh, okay, good. It's going to miss between Bermuda and Hatteras and be a big surfing deal, and that's it." Or get ready, get your supplies. There's a big hurricane coming. Uh, hopefully no in-betweens. I would rather it just be either it's going to hit or it's going to miss. Not any of this milling around and upsetting people for 10 days. Stressful enough as it is, isn't it? All right, I'll stay on top of it, posting updates to Hurricane Track on Twitter. Uh, you know, the main site, uh, I'll be traveling home today. Not much new information today, obviously. But once I'm back in the office, probably going to do two video discussions each day going forward. All right, that is it from me for now. Again, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. I'll have more for you tomorrow.